Discover how the Word of God can bring a change in your life through the teachings of Bishop Eddie Addy. Bishop Eddie Addy is an assistant to Bishop Daniel Mills and serves as the resident bishop of the Macarius Church. Anointed, energetic, and a practical teacher, the servant of God will inspire you with practical teaching of the Word of God that will refresh you, energize you, and bring healing to your body, soul, and spirit. Now, to the message. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today, for the wonderful privilege of serving you, knowing you, loving you. This morning, we ask that you will open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your law. Thanks for the blessing, the blessing of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Eight common mistakes of people who forget is the topic of my preaching this morning. Eight common mistakes. And um, I've been sharing on honoring the anointed. And um, I believe that, or even your, a father figure in your life, one of the things that helps you to honor properly is remembering and remembrance and not forgetting what good has been done and what blessing has flowed and are flowing from people that have um, been a blessing to you. So number one, people who forget dishonor founders and fathers. <laughs> I'm going to do a bit of reading because I feel that I must read so that you don't think that because I've seen your face, that's why I'm preaching. Because some of the things will be affecting me and also affecting you. So I, I don't want to paraphrase it like it's my words. I'm actually preaching from my book, Those Who Forget, written by my father, Bishop Dykewood Mills. Yes, chapter four. Those who didn't clap are jealous. Yes. Barbara, you are not clapping. <laughs> But we welcome all of you who are on Facebook, on YouTube, and um, any other medium. Maybe you are even hearing this on podcast after the service. Number one, those who forget, hmm, dishonor fathers and founders. Let me first of all um, jolt your minds with Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10, which says that for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. So one of the first things you learn about forgetfulness or remembrance and dishonoring people because of your forgetfulness is the fact that forgetfulness in the Bible is a sin. That's why he says, God is not unrighteous to forget. So those who, are, who forget are unrighteous by the logic of mathematics. Is that not so? The, those, he says, God is not unrighteous to forget or he's not so unrighteous as to forget. Uh -huh. And it's a very important um, doctrine that must sit in your spirit. You know, we've been talking a lot about deepening your foundations in God. And one of them is to remember. Remembering people that have been a blessing to you. People that have done you good. God said, God is not right to forget your work. People who have worked to make you who you are. And even if you don't see the work, it's not an excuse. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? 
Because when we take, let's say, what mothers have done, the song we just heard said that when I was um, not too heavy to be carried, Can. is that not so? He would carry me and dance with me. How will you know or even know, remember that your father used to carry you and dance with you? My, unless by photographs. And when you see photographs, say, is this me? God, you, don't, can you, not even, you yourself cannot recognize yourself even when you see your own picture at the age of six months or three months or four months. You see, the work that has been done is not something that you should ever forget. That's why the Bible says that God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love because when love is being showered on you, <laughs> it's labor, it's work. But you who are receiving the, uh, the love may not think that it's work or labor for someone. I mean, my son, when he was a little boy, particularly I remember because he wouldn't sleep. Like if you put him on the bed and he's feeling very sleepy, he doesn't want to be put on a bed so that he himself sleeps. So what happens is that you have to carry him, you know, and when you carry him, eh, he will also not like to, for you to stand at one place. Oh, yes, because it's like he feels the movement. I don't know how he feels the movement. So when you just stand at one place, he'll be crying. And he's feeling sleepy and he should just sleep. And this one, I'll blame my wife because she started it. And I said, this thing that you are doing, it's not a good idea. Yes, it's not sustainable because carrying a boy and walking up and down before he sleeps is not a good idea. I make Kaya, they didn't accept it. Eh? Now, at a point, they have to, when he's crying and they are tired, then they say, Why don't you pick him up? You see, and I said, This thing is what I didn't want to happen. What me person made that so I want to sleep, you know. I perceive from the beginning that this is going to be labor that. I was not ready to labor in that way. Hey! So I will pick this boy and then he will start crying. And then as he was getting a little, because babies, they are very nice to carry at the beginning because they are light. But as time goes on, they start putting on weight. And you see that if you put them here on one hand, hey, your hand will start hurting and at a point where you even release the baby, how to straighten your hand becomes a problem. I don't know whether some parents understand. What I, if you are not a parent, all these are not things you have understood. Yeah. You know, and you have to carry him up and down. That labor, eh, he will never be aware. If I tell him today, he will not even, he can't even relate with it. Because somebody's labor of love in your life is not something you may see. Or you may even be told. Or even when you are told whether you will even understand. And that is why it's important, do you see, to analyze things. Why am, how did I get to be here? How did I get to be here? As you are looking at yourself, very beautiful, and boys are chasing you. And you have become proud. Or proud. Do you see? Or girls like you and they are texting you and you feel so great like you are, uh, you know, you are a boy of the, you know, uh, the, the ladies man and, you know, you are, you are a handsome guy, some handsome dude, you know. And then it's like, you know, they are texting you and calling you, hey, this, 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 then you feel very cool. And so you don't respect the people who have worked and labored in love for you. That's why such teachings are pivotal in your Christian walk. You need to embrace it and put it in your heart and stand on it till you die. That there are people whose labor of love you never saw but are very crucial in your existence and your life. And that is what must provoke you to honor the people who were there at your foundation when you couldn't see, when you couldn't hear, when you couldn't understand. I mean, 
my ch- my children they were when they used to have a uh, running nose and catar you know it's like very blocked noses and and they cannot breathe and they cannot sleep and they are screaming what do you do the thing is inside do you see and he can't bring it out you can't you cannot because you don't have even that oh, him is is an instruction that is given him is like just heave a big breath and push it out of your nostrils feel it will come out and you can breathe but you can't you are not at that level where you can appreciate or understand such an instruction so sometimes mothers put their mouths on the noses of their babies and and do the sucking out for them I've done some before myself. Oh, yes. So when you sit here with bones, your head is hard like coconut, and your arms are strong, and your muscles have come, and your hair is longer and everything, you may not know, neither will you ever see, or even when you are, you are told, whether you even accept it. Oh, how? Mm. Oh, how? Oh, no, 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 I don't think. Um, maybe you are saying something to just humor me or to make me feel that you have really worked in my life. But that's the reality. That's the reality. The person who was at your foundation. Kwame, is that also? Have you not had such carrying moments, pacing up and down, singing lullabies? Is that part of the song that sang? Lullabies, my father sang lullabies. Is there? He made many songs and sang I can't to me. Hear you. He made many songs and sang to me. He made many songs and sang, sang to, to me. me. Yes. Songs that sometimes don't exist. You have to sing it and wake the baby and rock the baby and so on. Yes. Eh? Yes, Bishop. In London, I'll go for night duties. Yes, by the time I come back, I go for day and I go for night. Hey, working, working, any money. Yes, by the time I come, my wife too is tired. Hey. She has also been in the house looking after the babies and everything, and is tired. And you too, you have come from work tired, but you have arrived in the house as a new person who has now yes. come as though you haven't worked throughout the day and throughout the night. Yes. So when you come back, she also say, uh, please help out. You see, so yeah. now that you have arrived in the house, then the man, the, you have come to rest, oh, but yes. because you have not been in the house the whole day, it's as if you are, you are, not, you are now, you are fresh. <laughs> but you are fresh in the house, but you are tired from the double job yes. you are doing. Yes. So I had a strategy where I'll sit down and cross my legs flat so that I can put her there. But like you are saying, when you put them there, to, they want you to stand up. They want you to stand. They, don't, they, they, they cannot you. speak and tell you stand up. But you know that they are telling you to stand up. Yes. Hey, babies, uh, they can control. And you have to learn how to train them early and push them along a particular path. They, they have a saying that, Osuma obey jai. But sometimes the crying of the baby, they have a way of crying. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> It's like he's about to die. <laughs> hey! When they can see that you are not minding them, the cry and the screaming can get to a place. You, when you hear, you know, you see that, yes, you are killing your baby. Yes. Everybody, yes, everybody must know in the area that a baby is dying in this house. And what is being done to this baby? Hey! Screaming, crying. Will they, did they know it? Can they understand it? Can they see what you are doing? They can never see. They are here. They are here. <laughs> yes. They can never see. That's why the Bible has a lot of curses for people who dishonor their fathers and their mothers and by extension their founders. A mother is also like a founder and a father is also a founder of your life. It's your mother and your father. They brought you into existence. And the church too, we also brought into existence by a founder. It's not when you say founder. Maybe you don't understand. A mother is a founder. A father is a founder. 
And when you don't remember, you always dishonor fathers. Thank you, Kwame. Clap for Jesus. So one of the commonest occurrences, if you have all to all, just open to page uh, 36. All to all. We said that every book, we have a desk. Oh, they are not there today. They are not, but they are there always. They will put every book on your device for you, phone or tablet. You will get it. So please, go to the book so that you don't write a lot. So I can also move a bit faster. I can see people have opened their phones. Only don't check your WhatsApp. Actually put your phone in flight mode so they are not disturbed by notifications. Yeah, I see people have phones. They've opened. Easy. So if you don't have, right after service, they will be there to serve you all to all. That means all books, 100 books, are given to you on your device, on your tablet. Beautifully. You see, this is the work of a founder I've written books, I've labored, I've dashed you. Now, wow. the clapping is as though they've put some lead on your shoulders and you can't put the two hands together. Ah. Where will you get such a thing? It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. I can tell you probably that this is the very first time it's happening. Somebody has written 100 books and is freely sharing it as though they are not valuable. You look at what I'm sharing from one of the books. Whether it's not valuable. That if, you, if your children in the house were to hear what I'm saying, you would be very, you would even like me to talk to your children about what I'm sharing. Yes. And some of you in your homes, your siblings and you have ganged up against your father and are angry with him. As I'm sharing, the preaching is pricking you. So I'm reading it so that I don't say that Bishop has seen my face and he knows me and he knows my issues and he's fighting me on this thing. Bishop, you are not sure any man not yet preach. I'm just reading. Because it's our Founders Day next week. I'm emphasizing that founders must be honored and unashamedly honored. Unashamedly. Not something you should shy away from. Something you should retreat or drag your feet about. Even if I finish with one point, it's enough. I have about eight points. One of the commonest occurrences is the forgetting of the co- contribution of fathers and founders. Our Lord Jesus knew that he would be forgotten by the church. So he instituted the ritual of holy communion so that we would remember him. Yes. He says, do this in remembrance of me because people are going to come. He himself prophesied that the works I do shall you do and greater works than this shall you do because I go to the Father. So he has left us the Holy Spirit and given us the potential to do greater things. No matter how great you are and how great things you do, you are nobody is greater than Jesus Christ, the founder of our Christianity. No matter the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the, the, the apostle, the teacher, the pastor, no matter how great, none of us can ever compare even to start that there's a category and they've added your name and Jesus Christ is in that category. No, 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 no. no. We can never be put in the same category. But it's easy to forget that there was Jesus Christ. And even you can see now that he has left us communion. People use the communion to fight their demons and fight their, 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 their witches and, and things. They forget that it is primarily to remember Christ and what he did. Yes, he says, this is my body which is broken for you. This is my blood which is shed for you. Primarily is to remember Jesus. Primarily. And when you don't remember him and, and accord it the honor and respect the body and the blood deserves, you can die. He says, because people have taken it unworthily, some are dead, some are sick. Some are dead, some are sick. He doesn't want you to forget the work of love that he has done. He surrendered himself to be beaten and submitted himself for pummeling and, and torture till he died 
and he has done this work, this great work he has done for you and I. Monkai. When you come to church, you just want a wife. You just want a, a, a husband. You just want them to talk that you will get money next week. And that by, by next year, by this time, you know, you have moved into your own house. So anything that relates to his body that was broken, his blood that was shed, you don't want to hear it. And what the implications are for your life that if I took up my cross, you to take up your cross and follow me. You don't want to hear that one. Don't forget, no matter what comes, what is the founder of Christianity. And no matter who does miracles and does great wonders and whatever they do greater than what Christ has done, it doesn't even matter. There is only one Jesus Christ and there is only one founder of our Christianity and there is only one King of Kings and Lord of Lords who deserves our praise. Yes. That's why when we say this is how I praise you. We, we move and we, we can't stand at one place. This is how I praise you. Ba, 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 na, ba, 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 ba. This is how I praise It's like I must do something to honor this Jesus who labored for me, who worked for me, and gave his life to save my soul. Beautiful. And similarly, he admonishes us to also honor the founders of our lives and of our ministries. And Bishop Dagwood is the founder of the Macarius Church. And you may come and see Macarius Church and you not even see, you see, there was a time I plastered his photo and declared that this is our father, our founder, and our prophet. On every door, in between every door, there was a poster, red one, very nice. Because that's how I felt. That's our father. That's our founder. That's our prophet. Some naysayers were passing by and said, Ah, but why can't you have the man's photo all over the building like that? Is it not some way? Is it not like you are idolizing? And I had to get a call from Bishop Doug himself that somebody mentioned that there's he said, one of your churches that passed by, your photo was everywhere. It's like it looks like as if they are worshiping you. Be oh, and Bishop came under that pressure and called me and said, Pierre, you know, is this your church that has all these pictures, my picture everywhere? You see, it's a good idea, but you see, oh, I'm a software Bishop made me bring everything. I feel, feel like crying as I'm saying it. I feel so broken by it. It was so painful. As if I've done something wrong. And you come to the church, you can hardly see a photo of him. Like, if you come to my office or the lobby, you will see. But it's like, it's not enough for me. It's not. Because this great work, you see, you can come and meet it and think that he has no contribution here. But you are mistaken. You are just like a baby who doesn't know what was done. The work and labor of love. Until today, till tomorrow, you see him always asking, making this thing, fighting bishops fighting us to extend our love to others as he has labored to make this church exist and your mother doesn't have to tell you i sucked the phlegm from your nose i carried you my hands were even paining me even my back the way i'm bent now and i can't walk properly is because of you and when I was giving birth to you, a line on a nerve. You laid on that nerve for nine months. I couldn't walk. I was bedridden for nine. I mean, they will tell you all this. You can't even appreciate it. Still, you can't. You see, the fact that somebody has to come and explain his work and labor of love, which he has done for you before you could see or hear or understand, that means that there's, you have become a demon. Recently, Bishop writes, I was preaching to the leaders of students. I think I'll preach on only this point and close because I don't want to move from here. 
next week when we are coming, we will come and then maybe I can continue or something like that if I have the chance. But if not, read it. Yes. All to all. <laughs> yes. Recently, I was preaching to the leaders of student churches at the university. I called for the leader of a particular church. The leader stepped forward and I asked, do you know that I started the church you are pastoring on campus? He told the guy. This pastor looked surprised and answered, no, I never knew. I never knew. So I informed him about how I spent two and a half years of my university life praying, fasting, and preaching till this church was established. This Christian leader had no idea how I had been maligned and criticized for establishing his church on campus in Legon. He founded it. Years after you are not the president or the pastor of the church and you are not aware that this thing that you are enjoying, that they are calling you Papa and you are collecting the fans about, somebody was maligned. Somebody was criticized. Somebody was vilified. Somebody was, was castigated. Somebody was... Uh, uh, help me. Uh, somebody was what? Uh, somebody was what? Ostracized. Somebody was what? Oh. Huh? Humiliated, bastardized, misunderstood, mis 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 misrepresented. Yes, as if it's some cult leader who has arrived on campus. Somebody who just loves the Lord and is just following the great commission to win souls, follow them up, establish them, and just gather them for fellowship. That's all. Knowing him, that's what he was doing. Come and see the blastings and the faces. You know, as though some, some demon has arrived who is gathering people to go and kill them. Oh. Yes, after now you have come. Nobody is criticizing you. Nobody is lambasting you because now the church is beautifully established with a place to meet and then you are now the pastor of the church and then you are forgotten. You never want to find out even that. How did this church come about? Now there are some of you here, when it's time to marry, you say, oh, I want to get married. I want to use the cathedral. I want air condition. I want the place to be nice. And then I want the main auditorium. You know, but you don't know where it, what it has cost for us to be here. These are teachings, you have to hear them. If you don't hear them, you'll be different. Yes. Christian leader had no idea how I had been maligned and criticized for establishing his church. But such is the lot of fathers and founders. Their contribution is often forgotten. Unfortunately, in so doing, many set aside the ideals and vision the founders had. Mm. One day, a brother who had set up a mass choir returned to his university campus to pay a visit. He was greeted at the door by the usher, who obviously didn't know who he was. Mm. He, was he didn't know he was talking to one of the founders of what he was enjoying and managing. He was treated as a common stranger and ushered unceremoniously to the very back of the hall. Such is the lot of founders and fathers. And it's a mistake. It doesn't bring a blessing on the people who are enjoying what is happening. It doesn't bring a blessing. What brings a blessing is the honor that is accorded the unseen founder. The unseen founder who labored and worked. He worked and labored in love to establish what you are going to enjoy tomorrow. When you are walking down the aisle on tiles, this place was not like this. This was a bush. There were no buildings around us as you see today that all these modern houses have come, sprung up and they are now doing a dual carriage just in front of the church. It was not like that. When I came here, I stretched my hand over the road and prophesied over it. Yes, several times. First, they came to tie it. I said, no, that's not what we want. They are going to make it dual carriage. 
that will drive on dual carriage from Reese Junction and, and come to church here. That everywhere you are coming to be dual carriage. And it's been happening. This one has turned to double. This one double. Ability has become double. School Junction to gate is double. And now gate to church is also becoming double. You see? Even when you come, you will know that I have been prophesying over the road. Not on my church only. On the road as well I've been prophesying. And when you come later, you say you are a member of Fresh Lilies. Oh, Fresh Lilies, we are going to sing uh, today. Ah, uh, remember the founders and remember the fathers who have laid down their lives for us. Phew. Many churches do not remember their fathers, their founders. The memory of the founder dims as the years go by. His name is pushed away and anything that reminds them of him is erased. May that never be our portion. Amen. Say the amen well. Oh. Yeah. I said say the amen well. Yeah. One day you also be a father. You will be a founder of other lives. You may be a founder of some business that people are coming to enjoy. You will be happy that they have such a blessing of such a doctrine in their hearts as they are relating with you. Because you will go through things they will never see. You will go through things they will never know. You will make sacrifices they will never see. You will make sacrifices they will never hear. They will make sacrifices they will never know. New pastors want to remove the concept of Founders Day. I'm reading. Okay? Am I reading or I'm just... I'm reading. Yes. They want to remove the concept of... We should never remove the concept of the founder's day. In the life of the founder, neither even after his departure. It must never be removed. We will forget the ideals, like what they stood for, what he stood for. The vision that this church is a soul winning church. Very quickly we shift from what was the base, the basis and the foundation of a church and a ministry that you are enjoying. We shift from it. And those who come later, they don't want to follow. It's like some, eh, he said your father's words, eh, you thought that they are not good. There are some old ideas. That were long, long gone. That were long, long gone. Like some old man, be, some old man, he says we should go and do person to person. They say, ah, <laughs> this is a modern day. We are into, I mean, financial engineering and other such you know hedging and eh? we are into ai this modern day ai has come you are still going this old thing where go to door to door house to house ah no 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 we are into ai we go on the internet we use ai for so winning hey and you ask yourself how many people have you won in the last 20 years you see that you can't count them even on one, one hand. We must never move it. And we must love it. We must embrace it. We must stand tall on it. Kwame Nkrumah is the founder of Ghana. He, he led the in, to, for the independence of Ghana to be achieved. Even if you are not in Nkrumahist, you have to accept it. Even if you don't belong to CPP, you have to embrace it. You have to accept because it's not... Look, South Africa, they got independence, I think, in the 90s or late 80s. Just late 80s or early 90s, I can't remember. But, eh? 90s. I think it was late 80s. Okay, no, 90s. Early 90s, somewhere there. They will have apartheid where the white man is on the land you are also on the land we know it's africa but they have places you can't go there 1994 they have uh, bars and pubs you can't go this one is for white people says uh, right whites only white people only you can't go there you see the food very nice you can't go and eat some because apartheid segregated the white man from the black man and the privileges and the wealth of the land was the exclusive preserve of the white man. 
and his under his control. Meanwhile, he was the, in the minority. Bishop Moussa Sono, every time he comes around and we get to interact with him, he's from South Africa. He has a church in Soweto, a big church, mega church. He tells us that we don't know what we have. And when he's saying it, we look at him and we say, hmm. Say, you don't know what you have by the independence that you had early. It's like that you can think for yourself and decide for yourself and move by yourself. We don't know what that thing is. But they didn't have it. It has taken them a long time, 94. We got independence in 1957 and they got independence in 1994. How many years is that? 37 years. 27. Really? 27. 57 to where, ah. 94. 94. And how long is that from 57? 37. 37 years. That you were doing your own things, 37. You are independent from Britain. The independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked with the total liberation of the African continent. We have the right to manage or mismanage our own affairs. How to manage and mismanage your own affairs? That thing, you don't, he said, you don't know what that thing is. It's like you have a confidence that we don't have. You have some boldness we don't have. We don't possess it. You can talk to a white man, look straight in his eyes and say what you want to say to him intelligently. He said, we don't, we don't, it's like we, we are now working ourselves into it. Say you don't know what you have. And because you don't know what you have, you don't respect the founder. When he says it's Founder's Day, like, uh, I don't know what day they said. Day. His birthday is used now as a holiday. And you don't even know what it is and what he stood for and whatever. I'm, 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 the politicians don't think of what he stood for. Why he made us get independence so early. They don't know it. They don't embrace it. Self-government now. <laughs> hey! Ghana, our beloved country, is free forever. <laughs> yes, freedom. Ghana, land of freedom. Is that? Is, I think there's a song like that. Ghana, land of freedom. <laughs> it's a blessing, but you see, even as you are saying it, those of us who are sitting here wondering, ah, freedom. Any idea? What is this freedom? Freedom that doesn't bring money. Freedom. <laughs> freedom that. What, what, what is this? What, what is this? Uh, somebody said that we, we should have waited. Eh? He should have waited. South Africa, I'm trying to You see, but. <laughs> it's like South Africa is nicer than Ghana because they waited for so long. And now ask yourself that as they have been made to lead, what is happening? Hey! Found their soul. We set them aside to our own peril. New pastors want to remove the concept of Founders Day. New members don't understand what is it, what is this thing that this man is being deified and idolized you are not spiritual that's why you are arguing about this that's why you have such unfortunate comments to make about photographs or i mean ha mommy to tip photos yo painfully hey when you come you see them lined up beautiful very nice oh today i saw apostle toss he has made a, a photograph like the the size of our screen down to the ground like this and plastered it on his church building oh yes with the photo of the founder saying that celebrating the anointed not the, abo- the, the whole building that's honor 
That's acknowledgement. That's saying that we can't just wave our hand and wish it away. But somebody who has laid down his life. Today the church looks blessed with some money. But at the time that he began. And through about the first 5 to 10 years. It was not an easy thing. When we are almost being moved from the canteen. And there's, there was nowhere to lay our heads. And when you go to this known man, uh, uh, Christian, whatever, who is supposed to have money, who can help? And the person doesn't want to help. Or the person says that I cannot help you. And we look so silly. Today the church looks a bit blessed and even I'm sure politicians are caught in our friendship so that we don't preach in a way to make people vote against them. You know, the church is a force. The church is a force. Just in Accra, within Accra and its environs, when we gather at the Independence Square, that, vote, that number, hey, they can turn the vote. They can turn the vote. <laughs> hey, that number. I mean, when they even have campaigns, they can't get that number. Wait, 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 wait. You can imagine that all these people say that they are not voting, they are voting a certain way. Oh, it will swing like this. Ah, I think one of the elections, the one who won was 23,000. That was the difference. 23,000. Ah, 23,000. We can command more than that number. But it looks nice today, but it wasn't like that at the beginning. That is why people who start things and who birth things must be special to you and you must embrace it and love it and there must be a certain way also otherwise they can't bulldoze their way through the difficulties of life to establish what will last for many generations you have to be a certain way you have to be tough you have to be strong you have to be no nonsense no chilling of nonsense type of person that you have to continue even though they are saying things against you you have to keep your head straight and continue in the line that you believe God has called you to do it's not an easy thing that's why most of us are not founders most of us cannot start businesses and things that can work because the guy who employ you and so that he can sustain you for 5 years 10 years he has to be a certain way well, most of us like sleeping like relaxing you don't really like hard work oh you're there oh your skin sweets you so you will want to lie down like to eat do you see you just want to be paid you don't want to wear and the person has to be strong has to be hard has to be a no-nonsense person no hey what are you doing there you are sleeping come on out of here write you a query if i see this again you are out suspend you two weeks remove your salary half hey Papa no he's not he, he's not kind he's not very good he's always there on he doesn't understand anything it's Sunday watch on can it be if you come to church they say come at 7 30 8 o'clock you see that you are nine o'clock you are now leaving your house hey <laughs> You don't want to be shouted at. Meanwhile, you won't do the things too. You have to shout at you, shout at you. Hey, hey, come on, get up, get up, get up. If you have a good father, ah, all good fathers, you hear them. Shout, hey, get up. Who is there? Why are you all still sleeping? Get up. Hey, Ajoa, Ajoa, Ajoa. <laughs> you see that? You are sleeping, then you hear your name far away. It's not far at all, it's next door. It's, a, it's not a dream, it's real. Then you see that you have to now, oh, ah, who is called? Then you hear that, Father, then you hear some water sprinkling on you. Ah, why no, no? When you see her, that's, hey! <laughs> that's how you are now a beautiful girl who can cook, who can dress well, who can respect people because of a strong father. Those of you who didn't get a strong father, by eight years you were independent. Hey, what's through? What child that there? cannot easily be controlled don't respect talk by heart don't know how to even walk you just walk you, you stand there you break your leg because no father to straighten your back good father straighten your back straighten your legs hey make your face nice smile 
a good father a good founder now I'm seeing father founder is a similar father founder father founder father founder because father is a founder mother is a founder if you forget what work and labor of love that has been done for you you become stupid and re- okay you let me finish my re- I'm reading why well, you won't say that I'm the one who is saying something uh, the work of the, a founder and the apostle is the most difficult job of all I have forgotten even this paragraph the current pastor loves to be seen as the luminary who achieved everything on his own such people have forgotten the work that the founder did for the church to come into existence. The work of a founder and the apostle is the most difficult job of all. Paul said of founders, Paul said of founders in 1 Corinthians 4.9, 1 Corinthians 4.9, he says, For I think that God has set forth as the apostles last, as it were, as it were appointed unto death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels and unto men. The apostles. An apostle, founders are apostles. An apostle is a sent one who begins a new work. Yes. Their, their kind is rare and they are different. God said of Abraham, I know Abraham. He will command his household. The type of person Abraham is, he will command his children. Genesis 18, 19 or something like that. Yes. He says, I know Abraham for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. I know Abraham the way he is. He will not allow his children to do whatever they like and his household to do whatever they like. He will command them. That's why you have an apostle say, we are having flow prayer meeting. Wake up at four. He will command his children to wake up at four. Well, you won't pray. So that God will bring to pass what he has commanded concerning Abraham. Because you, if they leave you, you will sleep, sir. Nothing will happen. You just like games and movies. You say, oh, uh, uh, let's go and eat. Let's go and have games. Let's go and have, watch a movie. Why are we not going out? Why are we not enjoying? We need a concert. We want to have concert and enjoy. We want to just go out and have picnic. Hey, it's a long time since we had Agabapto Fest. It's a long time since we had this picnic where we eat and bring food and eat. Hey, so why don't we have International Sunday? I like that program, pa. It makes us eat a lot. Um, the last week, last year, I ate, I uh, couldn't even walk home. But I know Abraham. Abraham will command. He said, look, we are going this way. Move, 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 move. And that's why the people that are Abraham's line, hey, no matter how far they were scattered, they have names, they know their names, their genealogy, they know how to say, this one begat this. Oh, do you even know your father, after your father, your grandfather, after your grandfather, the name of the next person, you don't know it, and the name of the one before the great-grandfather is also finished, and the one before the great friend, oh, it's gone, but they, this one begat this, this one Abraham begat, and begat this, and begat that, Adam begat, Adam begat this, and Methuselah, and this one, and hey, the names are there, because the man knew how to make his children fall in line, and make them organize themselves so that they don't disappear on the earth. God knows that this man, he can make a whole nation such that the people, even if they scatter 2,000 years, 5,000 years, they can come back together. How he is. And the way Bishop Dag is, we are not like that. The different uh, well, He will write a book. He will document everything. How to witness. How to preach the salvation. How to have... A, a, a strong Christian, how to be a strong Christian, how to teach the word of God, how to be a good shepherd, how to manage the church, how to have how to grow the church, church growth, the gift of government, different things. Write them down with intelligent construction of sentences and explanation of procedures with examples, with scriptures. We are not like that. You are not like that, I'm not like that. May I to a point I would myself. 
Men, men drop. So, uh, you too, you don't write. A lot of things you haven't written them down. So if somebody were to ask you that, how do you make contum raise to your contum raise to you? Have you written it down? Do you have even uh, uh, like on your notes, eh? Recipe book that you have created for your food that you make. That if you want to teach your children, eh? So that your children will follow you and do what? Yes. So when, when you say, oh, eh, you understand? You understand? <laughs> no, you are still wrong, 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 wrong. Yes, I mean, but you haven't written it down. Have you written it down? Abigail, have you written yours down? Well, do you need the day? It's in your head. You are hoping that they will do it and by some chance it will work and taste. But you can see that no matter what they do, it doesn't get to where yours is. And you too, you haven't written it down. So he said, I know Abraham. He will command his children and his household after him. That's a founder. That's a founder. That's a founder. You are not like that. And when we say honor this type of people, you, you are angry with it. Honor such people, Barbara. Why would you have such a problem? I'm not saying you have a problem, but I'm just saying using your name as a good example. Yes. What did the American say? Yes. He had written model marriage. He has married. As he, he married, how you start, what you need, when you even become a beloved. They are beloved counseling. Counseling for beloved. Do you, do you know what must be done? You who are married. Do you know beloved those? How you beloved those? Uh, uh, what's his name again? Eugene. Eh? Do you, have you written it down? Can you tell somebody how to receive a proposal or how to make a man love you? Do you have any document like that? You are not Abraham. Eh? 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 Antoinette. Mrs. Jamfi. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, have you written down how to enter a man's heart? Because you enter the man's heart. Yes. How to step to entering them. Do you have anything like that? Can you command your daughters after you to follow your path by what you have experienced or no? Do you have anything written down? That he has. He has. He has. He has. He has. And you come and meet a church. When you say, oh, we, we are going to marry in December. We are registering. A brother sent me a text. Oh, I've gone to see a, a, a pastor. And then we are, we are, we've done our test. And then, do you know even who even established that? Before you marry, you should do a test. A medical test. To ascertain whether you and your beloved are compatible. Many churches don't have it. But I know Abraham. The way Abraham he is, he will command his children and his entire household. They will, they will follow, they will keep my commandments and, my, and they, they keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Uko Presbya, when you are in Presby, you may not know the one who founded Presby. And you don't understand what, what the laid foundation that was laid for. You will just enjoy the church. And then even the pastors who are there, they don't even mention the name of the person who founded the church. I shouldn't deceive you. Because you, as you have come, you can see that you know how to drive. Have you written down 15... Uh, <laughs> principles of good driving that you even pass on to your children. How to be a good wife. Eh? <laughs> Have you written any point? Are you writing notes that, oh, this is what I do to make my husband happy. Now, let me write my, I'm going to teach my, command my children to keep the way of the Lord in this way. 
Do you have verses that support your behaviors? Ajwa, have you written anything down? Eh? Steps to longevity in marriage. Yes, how to have a good experience. Like, this is my marriage. What I'm going through, I'm re- writing that side. Uh, this one is not a good thing to do. 15 things you should not do if you want to be happy in your marriage. Do you have anything like that? Have you written anything? Okuya, have you written anything? You see, all the people are mentioning, Mama, have you written anything? Tio, have you written anything down? Bishop, no. Bishop, no. Omo you know, accomplished long ago married people. Montra. And look at somebody he there. How to have quiet time, watch it up. How to have quiet time, watch it up. How to have quiet time. How to have quiet time. So everybody say, oh, this one, they are basic things. But if you don't write them down, you can't command your children to keep the way of the Lord and to do justice and judgment. You can't. I know Abraham. Oh, yes. I know Abraham. I know Abraham. The way he is. That's the sort of person I like. That's the sort of person I need. That's why God didn't choose you. God won't try me, Emma. Eva, have you written anything? Eva lost her husband some years ago. Have you written anything down? Like, how to survive as a widow. Have you written? No, I've written. How to bond with your children when your husband leaves. That's why when people write books, you should look at the books well, instead of just passing by and going to buy donuts. And when somebody has written and gives you, you think it's valueless. That's why all Checheni free. But it's because of love. It's labor of love. That's why I'm sharing it. I don't want you to struggle to ever have a book that I have. After all, I'm not writing it for money. I'm writing to command my children to keep the way of the Lord. If we're left alone, we will never write a book on how to preach salvation. If the church is left alone. Go around bookshops and ask yourself how many pastors have written on how to preach salvation. 110 ways. 120 reasons why you should be a soul winner. So that as a church, we never deviate from it. Yeah, sit down. That's why God didn't choose you. Because he knows that you are a good person, you are a nice person, but you are not the type who can create a movement that can make people follow a particular way that the Lord has given? I know Abraham. I know Abraham. I know this founder. If I make him the founder of a nation, it will work. It will work. Have you written any document on how to bath? For your daughter, so not even for, have you written, do you have any, like, seven things you should do when you are bathing so that your skin becomes smooth and nice and so that you don't have scent? Are there not important things you will teach your children? Yeah, but you have not written it down. I'm trying to say that you and the founder are different. You and the founder are different. Paul says that I think that God has set us like He has set us last. I don't know is that God has not given us that this thing where we are at the forefront. You know, we we were at the foundation of the church. We are rather like we are the last. We are now a spectacle. That's why you go on Facebook, people are writing about Bishop Dad. It is the lot of founders. Many founders are scarred and wounded individuals. 
they receive the largest amount of criticism and the least amount of appreciation but never in this church in our church we should honor our founder and appreciate him greatly greatly i want one day that when it is founders day seven people in this church will buy cars different different type, four wheel drive pick up uh, seven different cars that we are driving towards uh, first love to go and give to the prophet and say we want to appreciate you for the great work you are doing and want to give you more support for the work you are doing yes uh, seven people so like next week like that, i will expect that people will bring cars like oh i have this a new car i've bought i've arranged for it from a uh, toyota uh, brand new not home second hand brand new yeah. Yeah. this one tia rubber because you gave us a tear rubber church. Wow. We also give you a tear rubber car. <laughs> Come and sit down and say that. Hey, I know it's Founders Day. I'm sure they are going to ask you to give money, isn't it? I'm sure they are going to tell you that you must give something to your founder, isn't it? Then people are writing that this is a useless uh, process. You can never, it's useless to give anything to anybody who claims to be a founder of the church. Jesus is the founder of the church and not any human being. They are lost they are completely lost don't follow people who are lost you won't go anywhere somebody doesn't know where he's going you are following him one more quiet oh we are going somewhere there's nowhere to go follow the right path what i'm preaching is in the bible or it's my ideas it's the bible what's your name again grace oh grace <laughs> grace gracefully grace graceful grace perhaps it is even more painful when the founders ideals are set aside I once read a great founder about a great founder and found no comparison between what he believed what he believed in and what the church he, has, he had founded was practicing. May it never be our portion in this church. I visited the grave of this great founder and was taken on a tour of the founder's home by the caretaker. One of the last comments of the caretaker made, that he made was indeed very sad. He said, this great founder would be very sad if he rose from the dead today. Why, I asked. He continued, most of the vices he fought against are the ones that currently plague the church he has founded. He has founded. Sadly, the founder's ideals had been set aside. Even though this founder's name is certainly not forgotten, his ideals and vision have been set aside. The danger of all this is that the curse of dishonoring fathers will follow the current leaders. May such a curse never come upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let me close with Ham's experience. It is important, it's an important principle to honor fathers and founders. Ham, the black son of Noah, broke this principle and dishonored his father. It is the curse that followed that governs large sections of the world's population. Across the world, the inability of the black man to rise above the state of servanthood can only be explained by a curse. The black man's inability. Ham was the one who had black children. And it is believed that he's the progenitor of the black, the, the Africa, black people in Africa, in Europe, and in America, and elsewhere. He is the founder of that race. So the curse that was proclaimed on Ham has affected all black people. And even if you don't accept it, how do you explain our lot as black people? Everywhere you meet black people, our situation is similar. Hey! Bola, bola. Bad roads are bad roads. Death, death is death. Where we live, death, we we poo poo everywhere. 
littering of compound and sweeping of compound, choking of gutters, choking of sewages, everything. You see that? That's how. And it's like that for everywhere you meet black group of black people is like that. And it is believed that this curse that was proclaimed by Noah, his father, Noah, his father, if you read Genesis, eh? let me just get to that point. Chapter 9. I don't know where you want to start from. Let's start from verse what? Verse 20. Ah, and Noah began to be an husband man. That means a farmer. You see, this Noah, how many know the story of Noah? The story of Noah was, you don't know the story of Noah. How many know the story of Noah? Okay, some of you don't know. The story of Noah is in this wise, that there was a time in the world, God created human beings. They started multiplying. But the wickedness of human beings became a lot. The badness, the sin was so much that God one day said that, no, 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 this is too much for me. The, the wickedness of man. So he's going to create a flood that will destroy the whole world. Now, this has been archaeologically proven because Noah's Ark has been discovered. Yes. If you, if you want to know National Geographic, they have a whole photo of what is believed to be Noah's Ark because it's a huge ark with cubicles as described exactly in the Bible. Thousands of years after they found it. So Noah was the only righteous man and he had three sons and they got married. So it became six and with his wife, eight. So these eight people, God spared them because of Noah's righteousness. So Noah was called by God to build a boat because God said that he's going to destroy the earth with a flood. So you need a boat that can float on the surface. So he gave him dimensions. Because there was no technology of those days how to build big, uh, build big boats and ships. So God's dimensions is what saved them. So he built. He was building. They were laughing at him. They were ridiculing him. There was no, it hadn't rained for, I think, some years. Yes. And the people didn't think it would ever rain. So Noah said, was warning, God is going to destroy the earth. The earth is going to be destroyed. Everybody, save yourself, repent, and, and whatever. So he was knocking, knocking, knocking. And then eventually he finished the boat. When he finished the boat, he managed to get his children and their wives and his own wife into the ark and he selected animals it is believed even that some of the animals that were not god didn't select them so that they don't come into the new world like dinosaurs and things they, they existed before but i don't think they entered into the ark so when they entered into the ark noah shut the door or god shut the door god shut the door he locked it you can't open you can't you can't open somebody and you can't also break in and then it started raining drizzling first say hey this old man madman it seems like his prophecy was to come to pass i've seen some showers on my skin they were laughing still if you read genesis i think uh, the whole of chapter nine you see the story there no before because the the thing started genesis six seven eight and then we are in chapter nine Yes. So, when it was raining, they, they thought it was still a joke. Then it started becoming heavy. You know, sometimes the rain can start as though it will rain, as though it will not rain. Uh -huh. And then when it's raining, it's as if you, this one, uh, this rain, it will not last. Hey, but one hour, it wasn't stopping. Two hours, it wasn't stopping. Three hours, it wasn't stopping. Four hours, it wasn't stopping. Five hours. You know, in Accra, even. If it rains for two hours continuously, you can't easily go out of your house. Most roads will be covered with water. Alajo, they will have to evacuate people. I mean, Odor River will overflow. Kole Lagoon, it will be a disaster. That's why we have Nadmo. 
NADMO is National Disaster Management Organization. NADMO. They respond to such things. So every year, they are like, right now, they are, they are ready. They are getting ready because they know that by all means, by June, June, May, June, they have buckets, mattresses, rice. They've stored them ready to help people who are going to be displaced by rain. So this Noah's rain, it lasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Imagine a crowd that we have rain. Yo, like that. Eh? I'm sure there are some areas that will not exist. Recently, there was a cyclone in uh, Malawi. Whole villages were buried. Oh, yes. Very sadly. I used to communicate with my, 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 my bishop friend, uh, Pastor Zach, who is in Blanta. Roads were divided into two, like the, 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 the flood created a river that started and started eating the land uh, and went under the road and removed the road like two-story buildings, like the height of two-story buildings, and continued. So if you, you drive normally on a road, you get there, you see a very deep hole. You can't cross this way, you can't cross that way. And these rains were like maybe three days or two days. So you can, you can imagine 40 days and 40 nights. So Noah, after 40 days and 40 nights, he sent a bed. And the bed brought a leaf. A few times there was nothing to bring because there was no land. Then later I brought a leaf to show that, oh, now the land is appearing. So then they came out. When they came out, Noah in Genesis 9 20 began to be an husband man, like a farmer. Hey, I need to finish. And the Bible says that he planted a vineyard and he drank of the wine and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth, his two brothers, took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their founder, the father and their founder, and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had, gone, had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. So the two sons of Shem and Japheth, they are going to be the bosses of this ham throughout their generations. And he said, But blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Like if Shem has a God, that God is blessed. And he's supposed to be the progenitor of the Asians and all these type of places, Middle East and those places and so on. Yeah. They were, were, were when they have a God, the way they serve their God with passion, with zeal, with, with tenacity, never giving up. He said he blessed the Lord God of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. Then he blessed Japheth. He said Japheth shall be enlightened. That's Europe, Europe and the West. And he, he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. Yeah. That's why Shem people, they manufacture things. And Japheth lives in it. Yes. And Canaan shall be his servant. And even Canaan, he says, a servant of servants. So it's like if there's a servant, that's the servant of that servant. So that explains in, 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 in summary a lot of the problems that black people face. Because somebody dishonored a father. When he was in his own tent and drank, when he was excited that God had delivered him and his family, and he was so happy. Now you come and say that, Ah, look at daddy. Daddy is lying down. Ah, his bolo bolo is on. Hey, daddy, daddy's thing is big. Oh, crack, 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 cra, on Facebook. Crack, 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 on Facebook. Instagram. Hey, 
Come and see. <laughs> hey, sham, sham, sham. Come and see. Have you seen something before? I will show you something. TikTok. Charlie, blast it, blast it, blast it, blast it. Blast it, Charlie. Hey, we didn't know that <laughs> daddy is like that. We didn't know that he can drink. Oh, he can drink. Look at his boots. Cry. Hey, go and see. He's lying down. One leg here, one leg here. And his thing is dying down there. Yeah. Daddy, that is endowed. That is this big. Really? You are laughing at your father? Do you know what your father endured to build a boat for God in a time when there was no rain? You are uncovering the person who is the reason for your existence. Because of him, you are alive. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Ham forgot that it was his father Noah who heard from God and obeyed the call. Ham forgot that he did not know God well enough to hear the voice of God that commanded to build the ark. Ham forgot that if his father had not built the ark, he would not have, he would have drowned. He would not have been alive even. He would have drowned along with the rest of the world. Hebrews 11, 7 says, by faith. Noah was a man of faith. Oh. You see him as a drunkard, but he was a man of faith. Long after he's gone, long after he's dead and gone, the right up about Noah is that he was a man of faith. To believe the impossible, that rain is going to come when there has never been rain. Noah, by, by faith, Noah, being one of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his household. By the which he condemned the world and became heir, heir or founder of the righteousness which is by faith. He's the founder of the righteousness which is by faith. He's the founder of the righteousness which is by faith. And later when Abraham came, Abraham came to enjoy believing God and is counted unto him for righteousness through faith. Noah was already the one who, who championed that, that work. He cannot be set aside. Ham forgot that God had judged Noah to be a righteous man. Hmm? Yes. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Everybody was a wicked person. Only Noah found grace. Only Noah was special. All of us will not give ourselves up for ministry work. Small but center work, helping people to come to church, witnessing, bringing one more soul. You see that it's difficult for you. But here comes Bishop Dagwood Mills who says that I have opportunity to go to America but I will not go to America. I can go and pursue my medical profession abroad. Every medical student, if you know of any, all of them end up abroad. Even my specialist, specialist gynecologist, specialized in in vitro fertilization. He also went to... He was not born... Were you born in the UK? No, I wasn't. But Bishop Dag was born in London. Did you have relatives like your father lived there for many years? <laughs> not at all. Your mother... Not at all. Yes. But Bishop Dad, he has relatives there. He has people there. He himself, is, uh, he was born there. You will struggle. Was it easy to get a visa? Not easy at all. Ghana boy, when you move to Musa, you don't want your visa. The man with a dark face, how will you get a visa? But Bishop Dad, get, it's very easy. He doesn't even need a visa. And yet, when he had finished medical, how long after your medical training did you go to um two years two years after after house job yeah house job in 93 i went to 95 to to what to england to seek to seek greener pastures <laughs> and bishop dark says no there are a few lab tech and nursing students eh? were you in that were you in that era 
nursing students, colleague or not, nursing students, your relatives and some of your in laws are, were at the nursing students, isn't it? Yeah, they were all part of the founding around the founding time. Nursing students, because of them, nursing students and lab technician students, I will not go to London, I will not go abroad, I will not go to a place I find easy to go and pursue my medical career. I will stay and do ministry work. That's why we are here. That's why we are here. And to don't forget these type of things and honor such a person. Uh, sister, you clap. A boss, wow. TV. Yes. That's the lot of founders. That's what happened. That's what Ham, uh, uh, Noah did. People are going to disco. Noah is knocking wood together. People are drinking. The Bible says that in the days of Noah, they were eating and they were drinking. Yes. He preached for 120 years. Nobody responded. I've never seen such a ministry before that you do church and for 120 years you don't get converts. Hey. 120 days or 120 years? 120 years. I mean, if you're a man of God, I'm sure you can die of depression. Even your basenta work that you are doing, you, 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 you say you have only four people. You are, you are, you are wider than Noah. He preached, uh, nobody came. Nobody came. And he entered the ark alone. You, you, you imagine the kind of ridicule if the, the social media of those days. And after he has finished and is celebrating God has made him build a farm and he has planted vine and he has reaped from it and he's drinking the wine of it and, and he's naked in his tent too. not that he's outside on the road but in his tent every man of God has a right to be naked in his own tent every father has a right to be naked in. and what it even means is that if you have a privilege of being near somebody of that nature you, you shouldn't become a fool when you see things that you want to laugh about, don't uncover and don't expose. Don't reveal. And don't join people who want to expose Noah and Abraham and Moses and these type of fathers who have laid their lives for, because after they have saved us. Some of you, my message I'm preaching today, eh, it will save you from your own calamity tomorrow. I am for God that every man of God has a right to be naked in his own tent. I am for God that he himself was sometimes naked in his own tent. He forgot too many things and he paid dearly for his lack of remembrance. Today, the black man can scarcely rise out of the waters of worldwide despisement. Yes. You need a bailout. You need a um, uh, development partners, donor friends to help you to do things. Even when they help you still, you are not able to do much. May God deliver us from dishonoring fathers and founders in our lives. In Jesus' name. Clap for Jesus. who forget oh only one point people say it with me people who forget dishonor founders and fathers hey but tell yourself that I, but I am not going to dishonor founders and fathers say it well I'm not going to dishonor the fathers and founders in my life 
Hey, are you saying like you believe it or not? I said, tell somebody that I will not forget and, and I will not dishonor the fathers and the founders in my life. Say amen. amen. Clap for Jesus. Oh, are you clapping for the Lord? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever curse has come into your life without your knowledge, by your behavior towards a founder and a father in your life, that curse by the mercy of God be rolled away from your life. Be blessed to live long. Be blessed to prosper. Be blessed to be advanced in life. May the Lord help you and save you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are here today, maybe somebody invited you, but you're not a born again Christian and you want to give your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, I want you to lift up your right hand. Maybe somebody invited you. Maybe you've been coming. Or somebody said, today is a special day and I need you to come with me to add to me as I come to church. Because we have a one more soul project. And you are here. You want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to be born again. I want to be a serious Christian. I've been in churches. I've gone to church, but I know that I'm far from God. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, I want to give you that opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Please lift up your right hand in the air so I can pray for you. Wherever you are standing, just your right hand. God bless you. 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 So many hands are going up. Join them. Add yourself to it. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. God can only help you. God can only bless you. God can only do you good. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you have lifted your hand, I want you to come to me right in front here. So I can come pray. running. Come running. Come running to that mercy seat where Jesus is called. all of you for coming it's a special day in your life and God will do amazing things with your life it's not by chance that you are here and God wants you to take him seriously because he's taking you seriously so lift up your hands and I'll pray with you when I pray the prayer say it after me and your life will never be the same again actually even just that you have come forward is enough. You don't even have to pray a prayer because it has already happened. It happens in your heart. But I just want you to formalize it and then as you pray, God will do something new in your life. Say after me, close your eyes and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I come to you just as I am. Please forgive me 
for all my sins and wash me with your precious blood. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. From today, I will serve Jesus. I will follow Jesus for the rest of my days. Please write my name in the book of life. I'm yours forever. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe the word of God has come to you and you have been blessed by this sermon. Subscribe to this channel and get notified about every video posted.